everybody welcome back to my channel welcome to my monthly dp along um today i'm going to be working on the yin yang owl from diamond art club this is a 32 by 46 it's full square um and this is a christmas present for a member of my family so i really need to get working on it i haven't worked on it in the last couple of weeks a whole lot just because there's been a lot of stuff going on um between my significant other and me and the house and whatnot. There's just been lots of stuff going on. And with that, I'm going to sit down and we'll get started. Um, as a quick note, I am using a different filming setup today. Um, I've actually moved all of my filming stuff into my office instead of having it out in the living area. And we're gonna see how this looks when I go to edit. Um, but yes, there's a lot more natural light in this room and a lot less chance of like dogs barking and whatnot. Um, my other thing I wanted to let you all know before I get started is that over here I have a productivity timer that I'm going to have running. So I'm going to be filming this in 25 minute sections and then splicing everything together. So if you see periodic jump cuts, that's why the jump cuts are happening. And with that, I will go ahead and get started. Sorry about the ticking noise from my productivity app. All right, so today I wanted to talk about a truly riveting subject, which was grocery stores. I actually meant to talk about this last month and then I had a bunch of stuff happen where I did a kit up video instead. And so I'm doing this this month instead. Woohoo! Replace my wax. So the reason I wanted to talk about grocery stores was because the research triangle, or the triangle area in North Carolina, seems to have every grocery store imaginable at this point, at least in terms of national brands that are recognizable. And there was an article in the are on WREL, which is one of our local news stations, um, by their couponing lady about the opening of the new Wegmans. And it's the first Wegmans in North Carolina. And she was talking about how we, as a region, needed to kind of get over, like, because there were a lot of people in the area who were like, I don't understand why people are excited about Wegmans. It's just a grocery store. We've got 50 bajillion of them to choose from. It's just a grocery store. And this lady was taking the, the stand of hold up just because you don't understand why someone's excited for a grocery store. Um, maybe I can explain. And she did a very almost um, social science-y approach where she sat down, where she looked at um, how many people were employed to build the Wegmans, how many people are permanently employed at the Wegmans, um, what it means in terms of grocery competition and pricing in the area. And the crux of her argument was just because you're excited doesn't mean you should make fun of other people for being excited. And it got me thinking about how North Carolina is kind of in this weird position in terms of our grocery market where we have more grocery stores more different independent different grocery store chains than anywhere I've ever lived and more grocery stores seem to be coming here every year and it's become almost a thing with our new cycle of the new grocery store opening first triangle location at X lots of people excited opening deals etc etc and so I wanted to talk about all of the different grocery stores I cannot I will say now as a disclaimer I have not personally been to all of these grocery stores because some of them are in areas where I don't typically go and I don't go out of my way um, but I'm going off of what my friends and co-workers have said of their experiences at those grocery stores so to give you an idea of the Raleigh Durham triangle grocery scene. We have 
starting from the ones that I can think that I think are like the least expensive. We have Roses, Charlie C's, which are IGA grocery stores. Um, we have Piggly Wiggly, Food Lion, um, Food, or yeah, Food Lion. We did have Kroger's, but because Kroger and Harris Teeter are owned by the same company, they closed all of the Kroger's and they're working on converting some of them into Harris Teeter's. Um, words. There's Lowe's Foods, which is a North Carolina grocery chain. There's Aldi and Lidl. There's Trader Joe's. Whole Foods. Sprouts. Earth Fair. Wegmans. Publix. And I think that's everything. Please don't yell at me if I forgot one. I might actually do a comprehensive list and kind of a sidebar thing up here so you all can see. But as, as you can hear, that's, that's a lot of grocery stores. And there seems to be a grocery store for every budget, every diet at this point, especially in this area. And a lot of these grocery stores, there's only one or two locations in the whole triangle, as opposed to it being like there's one on every block. The exceptions to that would be Food Lion, Harris Teeter, and Lowe's. There are, well, Lowe's less so, but mostly Harris Teeter and Food Lion. There seems to be one of those every couple of miles, and it's fine. Harris Teeter is a pretty standard staple in the Triangle area. It started here, and Food Lion is pretty much everybody's discount grocery store. Um, in terms of my personal preferences, um, in my grocery shopping, I typically go to a combination. Oh, and there's H Mart. I forgot about H Mart and Grand Asia and the Restaurant Depot and so yeah lots of grocery stores so depending on what I've meal planned for the month or not the month for the week kind of affects what grocery stores I'm going to go to typically on a regular week I go to a combination of H Mart, Aldi, and Publix um, and I do those because there's an Aldi and a Publix right around the corner from my house. And H Mart typically has really good prices on produce and a wide variety of produce. However, that is a double-edged sword because H Mart's qual or produce quality and in some cases the meat quality if I'm going, if I'm grabbing ground pork or, um, pre-marinated bar Korean barbecue cuts or whatever can be a little suspect where the meats or the fish will expire, like turn rotten in your fridge within a day or two of you purchasing it, even if it says best by Friday or Saturday of the following week. So normally I just buy groceries or I just buy produce and some general staples like um, Asian sauces and sometimes frozen dumplings and whatnot. And then Aldi is my staples that um, my spouse and I are perfectly okay with buying from Aldi where we don't have a preferred brand from another store or if we can live with the Aldi store brand. And then Publix, because it is right around the corner, is the everything else grocery store. That being said, we also have a standing agreement to make a monthly trip to Wegmans, since Wegmans is on the other side of Raleigh from, from where we live. And we go a little crazy when we go to Wegmans, is we go to Wegmans once a month. And we get things that we normally can only get at Wegmans at Wegmans. So for example, Wegmans, for those of you who aren't aware, is a grocery chain out of Albany, Albany, I believe so, or Rochester. I will correct myself with footnotes and whatnot. Um, but it's a grocery store from upstate New York, and they are known for 
being kind of a hybrid grocery store. So the way my dad explains it to people who have never been to Woolwag Wegmans is imagine the prepared food section of Whole Foods with a farmer's market attached to a Costco and a Total Wine. And that varies depending on what area you live in because Wegmans is very good about doing market research and tailoring the contents of the store and the setup of the store to the area in which it's it's set and so when we go to Wegmans it's things like we buy the club pack of pierogies as um, staple foods for our pantry or freezer in this case um, we get the made fresh in-store bagels and cream cheese um, the prepared olive bar, the, the, or the vegetables, um, pasta sauce, that kind of stuff. Um, other than that, um, I could, I would go to Wegmans if I, every day if I could, but because it's, or every week, but because it's so far away, it's kind of prohibitive in terms of gas and time. Um, hopefully that will change. There are three other Wegmans scheduled to open in the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area in the next couple of years. There's one planned for um, South Cary near Cary Town Center. There's a North Cary one, which is on Davis Drive between Research Triangle and um, Morrisville Parkway slash Aviation, Par Aviation Drive. And there's one planned for Chapel Hill. And I live closer to the ones or to, to one of the other ones so when that gets open I might go more frequently. Um, in terms of other grocery stores, um, let me see. So to give you all my, my thing here, um, I if I could shop at Wegmans every week, I would. I love Wegmans. I will always love Wegmans. Wegmans has never done anything to make me ever want to say I'm never shopping here again. They're always polite. Their selection is amazing. Their prices are normally pretty good. And their selection of items can't really be beat in this area, especially in terms of their meat selections um, and some of their more specialty like freezer and pantry items. And they have one of the best house brands around other than like Trader Joe's and Aldi. Um, so I'm going to start now that I've kind of given you guys my background. I'm going to give you all, I'm going to go through all of the grocery stores that I have been to in my thoughts. And I'm going to try and remember because some, like I said, some of these grocery stores I've, I've only been to once or maybe I was, I went to once a really long time ago. But we'll see. So the lower end in this area is like the Roses and Charlie C's. And I used to live right down the road from a Charlie C's. So I would go to Charlie C's a lot. And it's a perfectly fine grocery store. It's definitely, you can tell that it's a more Southern focused grocery store. Cause you can get things like ham hocks and trotters and weird cuts of specifically pork. Um, but their meat sections are pretty good and they are super inexpensive. Their produce section is lacking, but you kind of pay that price with a lower end grocery store if they're going to have more along the lines of the bare necessities and not a whole lot of specialty produce, but it's still manageable. And like I said, it's perfectly fine. I used to shop there a lot when I was younger and I lived close to one, um, and it made it easier to get a lot of the, the things that I needed for more comfort style Southern cooking. And I would go back to one. I've never had a bad experience with one. Um, and then it's related to Roses, which I have never actually been to a Roses, so I cannot speak to Roses. But I assume that because it's the same parent company, it's about the same. And I used to get circulars for Roses as well, and they have about the same in terms of pricing and selection. I will say that in, from my experience that the Hispanic sections in those shops 
tends to be better than a lot of other places other than like a specialty Latin market. So that's a really good place to go to get um, Mexican or Tex-Mex ingredients like green chilies, specific spices, um, the more authentic sauces and beans and whatnot as compared to like Harris Teeter. Um, so the next step up, in my opinion, from these is um, Food Lion. Food Lion is Food Lion. I've never really liked Food Lion. It's much more of a place that I go when I have to. Like, I need something right now and it's on my way home. Or we're out traveling and it's like, I really need to stop for a soda and I can't find a gas station. But in general, I don't go out of my way to shop at a Food Lion. I used to, when I was much, much younger, I lived in walking distance of a Food Lion. And so I would walk to the Food Lion to do grocery shopping on Saturdays or Sundays. And almost always I would do some of my shopping there and then I would still have to go to another grocery store to fill in the gaps in the vegetables and some of the other items. All right, so let me see next. I guess next up from Food Lion would be Aldi and Lidl, where they're on the cheaper end, they don't have as great a selection, um, but they still have their purposes. I used to shop at Aldi a lot because it was the super, I could go in, get a couple, get what would normally cost me 40 or $50 in another store for 20 bucks. Most of their store brand, I actually don't mind. And they have a pretty good selection of German items. Um, so like Christmas time, they had all the German chocolate and the stolen. And you can get German mustard and Spätzle and bratwursts and all kinds of German foods there. But Aldi is also a German-based grocery store. And so that's something they do really well. Um, in for Aldi, I normally go there for staples that my spouse and I don't have preferences for elsewhere. So like if I'm going to Aldi, I'll get a loaf of bread, maybe some jam, um, sliced cheese, coffee creamer, frozen vegetables, lunch meat, lunch cheese, maybe some um, like green chilies. Baking supplies, because they typically have inexpensive baking supplies, other than flour, because I'm weird about what kind of flour I use. Um, and some, like, impulsey things. I do not, as a rule, buy produce from Aldi unless I have to. Um, and that's because I've had some really bad experiences with Aldi's produce in the past, where it's gone bad a day or two after I've bought it. Or I've picked up, for example, I think the first or second time I shopped at Aldi by myself, I was buying a 10 pound bag of potatoes for my pantry and I had picked out a bag. It looked fine. And when I got to the register to put the bag of potatoes on the conveyor belt, I discovered that the tomatoes were already, or not the tomatoes, the potatoes were already liquefying and black. So, or they already had one in the bag that was black and liquefying. So I had to run back to the potato display and grab a better bag of potatoes. But that's a lot of my experience with Aldi is I'll buy fruit and it will go bad quickly. Or I'll be trying to find a bunch of bananas or a bag of green peppers or whatnot and trying to find a package where there isn't any signs of mold, there isn't any signs of decomposition, has been tough. And if there isn't any, I don't know how many days I'm going to be able to use that produce before it does decompose, go rancid, go bad, etc. And with the way I grocery shop and the way I meal plan is I try and buy everything on Monday, on Sunday, and it's got to get me to the next Sunday. And I found that with all the vegetables, it's really, really hard to get to that next week on the fresh vegetables because they tend to go bad a lot faster than any other grocery store in the area, with the exception of H Mart. 
Um, I also typically don't buy my meat um, from Aldi. Um, my spouse and I have been doing a trial period where we've been trying some of the meats and fish and fish and whatnot that you can get at Aldi. The sausages we know are okay. We, we get the sausages a lot. Um, but we've been really hesitant to buy like ground beef and chicken and whatnot unless we absolutely have to buy it there. Um, just because there's been a couple of times where we've bought stuff and it looks okay and you buy it and then it's definitely not okay when you open it when you get home. Or something to that effect. Plus the prices that they have on their, their fish prices are really good. Their meat prices vary and depending on how, like what time of year it is, you can almost definitely find a... Um, what I meant to say was depending on the time of year and what kind of meat you're looking to buy, you can typically find a better price on chicken, ground beef, pork at a traditional larger grocery store with a sale. And I'm not saying that to rag on Aldi at all. No, that's not that's not what I'm doing at all. But I'm very cost conscious and so I have in my brain like the, I know I can get this price for this elsewhere, so why would I pay X dollars for this if I can get it for Y somewhere else? And know that the quality will be on point every time and that I can get a couple of days use out of whatever I'm buying. Um, that brings me to Lidl. I have actually never shopped at Lidl. There are only a handful of Lidl's in the Triangle, and I haven't gotten around to visiting one. It has a very similar model to Aldi, in that it's a German grocery store that prides itself on efficiency, so they're smaller, there's less selection. Um, you do a lot of the work yourself. And the prices, from what I understand, are on par with Aldi. I have friends who absolutely adore Lidl and will pick Lidl over Aldi any day of the week. So whatever that means to you, it means to you. Um, I'm still working out if I want to try Lidl or if I have enough options around me that I can just say, eh, I don't need to shop there unless like the world is ending and it's the only grocery store nearby. All right, so next in my brain, it's like I'm trying to think what would be next in my brain. So I guess next, if we're going along with smaller, more niche grocery stores, you would get into like Trader Joe's. And so Trader Joe's is actually owned by one half of the family that owns Aldi. So according to the story that I have seen on the internet, Basically what happened was the Aldi family, or was it the Aldi family? It might be the Aldi family. They might have an actual name. I'll make myself a sarcastic response if I've got that completely wrong. But um, basically what happened was the after World War I, the father started a grocery store. And when the two sons took over, they fought and didn't really get along. And so they made a deal where they would split the business in half, one half for each brother. And so they formed Aldi South and Aldi North. And one company became what in America is known as Aldi. And the other company became what's now known as Trader Joe's. And so Trader Joe's tends to be a little more up market, I think is the word I'm looking for. Then Aldi, it's, it has more specialty goods and it's 90% house brand. It's still relatively inexpensive, um, but the shops are a lot smaller. There's, it's 90% house brand. Um, what I love about them is they do some specialty things really well. So they do like, um, what am I thinking of? Um, like frozen TV dinners or frozen TV lunches, whatever you want to call them. They have a ton of options. They do frozen fish really well. They've got a lot of breakfast options and game day snacks, huge bread department, an okay 
veg department, especially if you're looking for something specific that you wanted to buy in a certain amount. And a really good cheese department. And they also do beer and wine, but, and they'll do beer by the bottle instead of by the six pack. I like shopping at Trader Joe's for those specialty items where normally when we go, it's we're going to get a couple of specialty things that only Trader Joe's does. We can't get it anywhere else. Or, and we really can't figure, or we can't make it ourselves and have it taste as good. So like one of the things that we get a lot of at Trader Joe's at the moment is they just released for fall um, their chicken and poblano raviolis. And while we do have the ability to make pasta, it's a lot more time consuming than one would think. And so we normally just buy our pasta. And when we do that, we can buy two packs of the poblano and chicken ravioli and make like a Mexican ravioli bake that both of us really enjoy. But we don't go there to do our regular weekly shops. It's typically super crowded, super congested. And we can't always find the exact things we need to make whatever dishes we have planned. All right. Um, but I really do like going to Trader Joe's. For me, it's like a second tier where if I've planned, planned out the meals and the spouse has agreed to the meal plan, it's like, okay, I need to go to Trader Joe's for X. Then we go to Trader Joe's. Or if he says, hey, let's go to Trader Joe's and look around, we go to Trader Joe's and we look around and we don't buy anything. But that is just our normal kind of dynamic. All right. Okay, so after Trader Joe's, I guess I will talk about the Asian grocery stores. So, at least for me and my spouse, there are two major Asian grocery stores that we visit. We have Grand Asia and H Mart. And Grand Asia is just a local one-off small Asian grocery store in the Cary, um Crossroads area. And it was kind of my first introduction to an Asian market. And it was my first, like, exposure to the idea that the Asian grocery stores might have better deals on vegetables because in those kinds of cuisines, they tend to utilize a lot more vegetables and tend to have a wider variety of vegetables than you would see in a normal American diet. And I was originally taken to Grand Asia because they have a prepared foods area that is one of my spouse's favorites and they are known for their beef noodle soup. And so we had gone and we ended up walking around and buying some vegetables and some meat and whatnot. And I really enjoy going to Grand Asia. I don't go as often because it has kind of the same issue as Trader Joe's is that if you're there at the wrong time, it can be incredibly claustrophobic and hard to move around and get at what you need to get at. But I will go occasionally for some specialty things or if we're in the area and we want to stop for some noodle soup or whatnot, we'll stop for noodle soup. But it's not one I visit as much now that I have discovered H Mart. And H Mart is, for those of you who don't know, is kind of a, or it's not kind of, it's a national Asian grocery chain that is primarily focused on Korean foods and kind of being a Korean grocery, but it, it serves basically the majority of Southeast Asia, China and whatnot. And it it's very similar to Grand Asia in that it has a prepared foods area, but it's more like a mini food hall. So in there you have the Korean barbecue chicken, there's a Korean restaurant, a Taiwanese restaurant, um, a Japanese restaurant, and a, and a Chinese restaurant that you can buy plates of food from and eat there. It has a huge, huge, huge vegetable section. There's a Korean, ba or Korean or Vietnamese bakery. 
there's a beauty shop, th there's where you can go and buy live fish, huge barbecue meat pre-marinated section, that kind of stuff. And I normally go there for my vegetables because they have a pretty good array of vegetables. And it's not as expensive as a traditional grocery store. Um, I also go there occasionally for meat. So, like, it's one of the few places where I can find um, ground, pre-ground pork for when we do things like um, pork and tofu lettuce wraps or if I want to make, like, a ground pork anything. It's a lot easier to get the ground pork there than try and find either regular ground pork or have to settle for something like Italian sausage or a sausage grind and then hope it'll work for what I want to use it for. Um, the downsides to H Mart is it can get really crowded because it's not, it's very similar to H or Grand Asia in that the areas for each aisle are fairly small. You can't get two carts up and down with all the little shops kind of around the edges. It's really hard to get at stuff. Um, the meat quality, normally if we buy meat there, it has to be cooked either the day we bring it home or the next day or it will go bad. Um, we've had a similar experience with some of the vegetables. Most of the time the vegetables last for a really long time, but we have had a couple where like we've bought a bag of mandarin oranges and the mandarin oranges are black by the Wednesday after we bought stuff. Um, so normally I go there for vegetables. I also go there for Asian staples, like different kinds of noodles, different kinds of sauces. I also get my fish there because we normally try and do fish dinners on Mondays. And so it's easy. I can justify getting the fish there because normally the fish is pretty good quality. And you can normally, depending on the kind of fish you get, you can have it butchered right then and there. So you can watch them butcher, butcher. Now they won't do like clean gut and filet anymore. They used to, but they stopped doing that. So you can basically get descaled and cleaned, cleaned and gutted. Um, but any way that you buy fish from their section, unless you're getting rounds of fish for like stews and curries and things, you're going to have to do some butchering yourself. And even if you're doing that kind of curry and whatnot, you might still end up doing the butchering yourself. Um, but I'll buy fish there if we're planning a fish dish on Monday and the fish looks really good. I did have one where in one of the recent weeks when I went shopping, I had intended to get fish from H Mart and none of the fish looked very good and all of the fish was really close to its expiration date. So I was like, no, hold off. I'll go buy fish elsewhere. And while we were kind of disappointed with the fish I ended up getting, I preferred that to having bought the fish, got it home and then cooking it on a, the day after I buy it to have it be rotten and unusable. All right, so that's the Asian grocery stores. Um, in terms of um, mentions of stores that I've seen but never gone in, um, we also have Patel Brothers, which is a local Indian market that's built in kind of an old Trader Joe's building that is always full, but I've never gone in myself. There's a ton of little Mexican markets. There's a whole shopping center in kind of the city of Cary proper where there's a fish market, a Japanese market, a Caribbean market, a Mexican or a Latin market, an Indian market. And I've just haven't had a chance to go down and really look around because I'm not, I normally only go there if I'm looking for something in particular I cannot find at a, at a normal grocery store. So moving on from those, let's see. Next, I guess I will go over the big three, which would be Harris Teeter, Publix, and Wegmans. And I guess the best way to explain it is, I guess the way my dad explains it, which is a Publix is like a Florida version of a Kroger. In that they have about a similar kind of feel. It 
touts itself as low cost. There's typically really friendly staff. Um, their meat selection is, is pretty good. Their fish selection is okay, but you can always special order something. Their bakery department is really great. They have a really good house brand for a lot of things. And they have a pretty good selection overall. My only gripes with Publix is that for some things, they can be incredibly expensive. And it's really hard to find certain cuts of meat and certain vegetables just because they try and keep things fairly normal. But with those things, I can normally find them at one of the other grocery stores. And it's not normally an issue. Um, which is part of the reason it's my like weekly shop area. Harris Teeter is, as I said at the beginning, oh, and I guess I should throw Lowe's into this one, so the big four. Um, Harris Teeter is a local chain that has spread out to be a semi-national brand. It's owned by the same company that owns Kroger's. So it's to, in some places it's considered, if you go by the good, better, best model, it's the better version of Kroger, um, where they have a lot of similar things, but H Mart typically has a better beer and water, or not H Mart, Harris Teeter normally has a better prepared food section, a better deli, um, a better meats or a better meat selection, better freezer selection, and they're everywhere here. So most people will shop at Harris Teeter probably once a week. Unless you were just completely anti Harris Teeter and then you'll shop somewhere else. Um, I used to shop at Harris Teeter all the time because it was right around the block from my old apartment. Which I never really had any issues with Harris Teeter. I did have some times where it was really hard for me to find vegetables. Because Harris Teeter can be a little expensive depending on the vegetables you're buying. And depending on the Harris Teeter, it can be really hard to find um, vegetables depending on what you're looking for. So like there was one example where I was trying to find a specific type of lettuce for a salad that I was making. And I had stopped at a Harris Teeter because it was on my way home and I had seen it. I'm like, well, if I'm, if I'm here, let me stop. Let me look. But it was a smaller hair teeter, and so they didn't they didn't carry it because it was only carried at certain sizes of Harris teeter. But Harris teeter does a really good job of kind of catering itself to the area that it's in. So each neighborhood's Harris teeter varies a little bit based on what you're looking for. Um, my complaints with Harris teeter are the meat department isn't great, and the fish department is absolutely abysmal. Um, the, I've never trusted fish from Harris Teeter. Um, the meat department's okay as long as you're not looking to buy things in bulk. If you want to buy like a pound of ground beef, it's great. But normally when I'm making stuff, I try and buy my meat in bulk and I freeze whatever I don't use. And they, their only way of selling meat in bulk is they sell it in those tubes. And I get really weirded out by the tubes. And so I always try and find a place where I can get it not in the tubes. They also, it's really hard to get like certain sizes of chicken. And yeah, I know most of these complaints can be solved by going and talking to the butcher. But a lot of times when I'm going to these grocery stores, I'm going to the grocery store for the convenience of whatever the grocery store offers. And I don't necessarily want to be like, hey, butcher, um, I know that this is like this, but I'd really like to buy X. Like, the only time I'm okay with that is if I'm at a higher-end grocery store or shop, like, Butcher's Market if I'm buying meat or if I went to, like, a very specific Whole Foods um, and was buying, like, a pound of, like, I'm trying to think of the words, like, a pound of, like, the Whole Foods chorizo or something where I'm, like, I kind of want to be able to buy not just one pound of ground beef and have to buy six of them. I'd rather just buy like a club package economy size, but not have to pay the Costco membership to get the economy size. If that makes sense. Um, 
So there's those two. Lowe's is a regional chain. It's I've only seen it in North Carolina. It is a North Carolina business. Um, I used to go to Lowe's more when I lived in my first apartment because while I was in walking distance to a food line in an Aldi, I preferred Lowe's um, simply because they have a much better meat selection and they tend to run more sales than the other two. And I just kind of liked it better. Lowe's, I think the best thing about Lowe's is their um, sausage works where they do their own made in-house sausages. And they have a bunch of different flavors for different times of year, but they serve, but you can get them all year round. So like my spouse and I's favorite is the Vampire Hunter Sausage, which is a garlic brought first that, you, that used to be only available at Halloween, and now you can get it all year round, and you can buy it by the link or by the pound, and it's just delicious. The other thing I love about Lowe's is every once in a while, or I guess once a quarter now that I think about it, they'll run a all the meat you can fit in the brown paper sack is 50 or is 25% off, which to me, if I'm going to get meat... With the exception of now that the fact that Wegmans is open, because Wegmans kind of negates this, is <coughs> is once um, Winlow's runs that sale, they're actually pretty competitive in terms of meat prices and so I would go and kind of stock up on meats and do a bunch of freezing or types of other types of preservation to make the meat last longer so I would get a better deal on my meat for a while. With the advent of Wegmans in the area that's become less of a big deal because Wegmans does what they call club pack where you can go in and buy Essentially, a tray about the size of a of one of my bead storage containers, and that would be like five to ten pounds of ground beef and five to ten pounds of chicken or whatever you're buying, and that is typic that typically has a per pound price of one to two dollars a pound, and with the max of like three or four dollars, I think. And normally with those, I'll section them off. And I can use them for a lot of different things over a course of a couple of weeks. And it's always been a really great deal for me. Um, but highly recommend Lowe's for their sausages. Um, so that's those. I've already talked at length about Wegmans. Wegmans is my favorite. I could talk all day about how much I love Wegmans. But that is neither here nor there. So the next group of stores, I guess, would be sort of the higher end grocery stores. So with this, the only ones I can think of are Whole Foods and Earth Fair. And for me, Whole Foods is really, really hit and miss these days. Where there are days I really love Whole Foods and there are days that I really hate Whole Foods. And I've discovered that it depends on the Whole Foods I go to. So where I live, I live just down the road from the Whole Foods now. And I used to live just down the road from a Whole Foods at my last apartment, but they're two different Whole Foods with two different sizes. And the Whole Foods that I'm currently just down the road from, I feel is a smaller, less good Whole Foods than the one I used to live near. And I say that because, so the Whole Foods that I used to live near well, it wasn't the largest of the Whole Foods, is, but it had a really great meat section. It had a really good fish section. It had an amazing cheese, cheese area. Pretty good beer and wine. It could get a lot of little claustrophobic during high shopping times. But in general, it was really good. It had good selections of all the things that I would go there for. There was always somebody who was willing to talk to you, willing to say hi, how you doing? And I really enjoyed that one. The Whole Foods I currently live near um, is one of the smaller model Whole Foods. And it contains a little cafe from La Farm. 
And to me, it's just a lower quality Whole Foods. The meat section is much smaller. The fish section is much smaller. The vegetable section is much smaller. The cheese section is dramatically smaller. Um, there isn't as much selection as with other Whole Foods markets. Um, and I think the thing that makes me hate the whole, this particular Whole Foods more than any of the other Whole Foods in the area is so, um, which is probably better from my waistline, but not good from a customer service standpoint, is one of the things that Whole Foods does is they have a bakery case, dessert case type thing where you can buy cupcakes and cannolis and tarts and whatnot. And I look at it because most of the time when I'm going to the Whole Foods that I live near, I'm going to pick up a couple of slices of pizza, maybe some hot bar stuff, maybe a soda, maybe some vegetables that I forgot. But I always stop and look at the pastry case because I really enjoy their pastries. But in all of the times that I have been to that Whole Foods, not once has a, has a bakery employee acknowledged the fact that I existed. I could be standing there staring at a cup date cupcake, trying to debate what kind of cupcake I want, and no one will acknowledge my existence. So it's like, okay, I guess you don't want me to pay $6 for a cupcake, and I'll just go about find something else or go home and make my own cupcakes. And I'm just like... In terms of H Mart, or not H Mart, in terms of Whole Foods, that really lets me down because most of the time I'm having to wave off their employees, be like, no, I'm not interested, no thanks. I'll like let you know if I need any help. And even when I've asked for help, because there have been a couple of times where I've really wanted a fruit tart or a, or a um, cupcake, and I can't get anybody to acknowledge the fact that I exist there to even take my food order. Um, so with Whole Foods, at least in the Research Triangle RTP area, I would say tread carefully. And if the, you were going to go to a Whole Foods, I would suggest either going to the Whole Foods off Six Forks, the Whole Foods off Wade, or the Whole Foods that's in Chapel Hill. I would not go to the one in North Cary at all. All right, and that brings me to probably... My least favorite grocery store on this market, on this lit, on the during this talk, which is Earth Fair. So Earth Fair is kind of like Whole Foods, but they build themselves as being kind of a health food grocery store. So everything's organic, everything's clean, everything's local, but their selection is abysmal. Their customer service is meh. And it's a really small grocery store that's just really disappointing. I used to go in there on occasion because my spouse would buy the soaking salts that they sold by the pound. Um, but we have since found alternatives to that so we don't have to shop there. But that's another one where it's like, I don't understand how people pay those prices for groceries. Where they're in there wanting four or five dollars for a... For a like a single year of corn. I'm like, why are you charging this much? I don't I don't care if it's organic local corn. I can go to the farmer's market and get it cheaper. And I get that you're trying to be healthy and stuff, but also when they've done health inspections and things, your prepared foods area hasn't gotten the best um, ratings. It's not really well thought of in the area. So why are we harping on this as kind of a selling point? And I guess, because I've reminded myself, that brings me to the final grocery store I'm going to talk about, which isn't a grocery store. It is the State Farmer's Market. So one of the nice things about living in the Research Triangle, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, Triumvirate area is that we are right around the corner from the State Farmer's Market, which is off Lake Wheeler Road in downtown Raleigh. And it's been operating for years, and it's exactly what you would think it is. It's basically a bunch of open-air large warehouses where a lot of the local farms will set up stalls to sell you their local produce. And yeah, it is a little more expensive depending on what you're buying. But in general, it's cheaper, it's better, and you actually get to talk to the people who make the foods or grow the foods. Um, there's also the State Farmer's Market Restaurant, which is consistently rated as having one of the biscuit, best of biscuits in the state because they use only North Carolina products to make their biscuits. 
there's a market area, a kind of home goodsy store, and the wholesale markets. And every time we have gone there, it's been a really ha good experience. We've always managed to buy something that we end up using and enjoying. The only time we haven't was a time when I bought a bag of kale and I opened the bag of kale to find that a black widow was living in my kale, which meant everything went immediately into the trash can because there was a spider in the kale. And I'm perfectly happy with spiders as long as they don't, you know, if, as, long, as long as they're there and I don't have to see them, I'm okay. But the minute it tries to crawl out at me, I get very, very, very scared and turn into a groveling small child that wants to run away and hide. So immediately it went in the bin. But that's, that's something that they really can't control. And most things that I've bought at this farmer's market, or actually everything I've bought at this farmer's market has either been delicious or useful. And in saying this, I realized that there was one other thing that I mentioned that isn't technically a publicly available grocery store. So I have access to the local Restaurant Depot, which is a restaurant wholesale store, which I have through my spouse for various reasons. And it's very similar to Costco, but it's only restaurant things. So you can go in and buy a container the size of one of the bead storage containers of cilantro or parsley or Thai basil or you can buy half a goat or a whole goat or whatever and we normally go in and we buy beverages and we buy um, depending on what we're doing we'll buy pitas and hummus and seasonings um, but we only go there occasionally and we only get a couple of things that we know we can get cheaper there than we can other places um but it's not a commercially available grocery store so i won't call it that i know i just mentioned it earlier so with that i did not make much progress i got a section and a bit done on this guy but i will talk at y'all next month i hope you all enjoyed this month's grocery discussion um please write down in the comments what you think about about your local grocery stores if you know or have been to any of the grocery stores I mentioned and disagree with my takes please comment down below I'm happy to have a reasonable conversation with y'all but with that until next month I will see you later bye